This video will go over how to install an ACI drop-in module for Motorola and General Instruments housings. ACI offers many Bridger and Line Extender drop-ins. Our amplifier modules come with a highly advanced programmable AGC called the DSIM pre-installed. The DSIM can be set to lock onto any analog or digital channel and will minimize downstream level variance, eliminating any need to return for seasonal rebalancing. All amps come with forward and return JXP pad adjustable EQs installed, so there is no need to stock any fixed value EQs. The setup of our amplifiers is extremely straightforward. There is no manual back off pot, ADU pot, ADU pad, or jumper involved in the setup. The DSIM takes care of all of that for you. Begin by prepping the module before installing it into the housing. The forward input and reverse output padding and equalization come without pads installed. They are set up using standard JXP pads. Refer to the amplifier you are replacing or pad an EQ according to system design to achieve ballpark levels and prepare the module for setup. If you are installing the module into a housing with a short run of cable leading into it and you need a cable simulator or cable equivalent EQ to attenuate the high end frequencies, you can pop out the pre-installed pad adjustable AEQ and replace it with a pad adjustable ACEQ. The mini bridgers come with jumpers pre-installed. Port 3 is disabled by default. Use a jumper, splitter, or directional coupler to configure the mini bridger according to system design. The direction of the through port is indicated on the top of the directional couplers. Remove all the power directors except for the one that will be powering the amplifier. Now that the amp has been prepared, remove the module you are looking to replace. The LE comes with a bag of seizure screws included in the box. We have two types of seizure screws available for the mini bridgers. The first is a 15 amp seizure screw that works in 15 amp housings. Replace existing seizure screws in the 15 amp housings as needed. The second is a 15 amp seizure screw that works in the older 10 amp housings. 10 amp seizure screws should be replaced. The power pack on the line extender is built into the module. The mini bridger draws power from the pack in the housing. Install the ACI drop-in. Torque the RF module's four mounting screws between 18 to 22 inch pounds. Power up the amp. The DSIM AGC will take a moment to turn on, then it will begin to flash blue on and off. This indicates that the DSIM AGC is in manual mode. Replace the power directors one by one as needed according to system design. Balance the levels on the amp with padding and equalization. There is no need for any fixed value EQs. All you need is JXP pads. The JXP pad value sets the value of the EQ. If you need a 5 dB EQ, then simply plug in a 5 dB JXP pad. If you need a cable simulator EQ, pop out the pre-installed regular AEQ and replace it with a pad adjustable AC EQ. You can adjust any forward output pad by up to plus or minus 3 dB if needed. As with any amplifier, allow the amp to warm up and reach operating temperature before balancing. Plug the connector cable into the DSIM, then plug the controller into the cable. The controller LED will flash red and blue for a few seconds while it syncs up, then it will turn solid blue to indicate that the DSIM is still in manual mode. Now that the amp is balanced, press the MO button on the controller to cycle the DSIM over to AGC mode. The controller will flash blue and red for about 30 seconds while it uploads the pilot channel into the DSIM and the DSIM locks onto the pilot. When the alignment is finished, the controller will flash blue on and off rapidly, indicating that the DSIM is now in AGC mode. Remove the controller from the cable, then remove the cable from the DSIM, and the amp setup is complete. While in AGC mode, the LED on the DSIM will flash a pattern representing the pilot channel it is locked onto. In this example, the DSIM is set to channel 88 digital. Here we see 8 quick blinks to represent 80, another 8 quick blinks to represent 8, and then 2 long blinks to represent digital, as opposed to just 1 long blink, which would represent analog. Here are some examples of blinking patterns for other channels. The DSIM allows you to precisely adjust and compensate when setting up in extreme temperatures. 
Making an adjustment when it is extremely hot or cold outside will ensure that the DSM can take full advantage of the amp's body range, eliminating the need to return to the amp for seasonal rebalancing. First, let's do a quick review of the setup. After installing the amp into the housing, balance the levels on the amp and plug the controller into the DSM. The DSIM is still in manual mode at this point in the setup. This is where you'll want to make an extreme temperature adjustment if it is needed. If the ambient temperature outside is between 40 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, there is no need to make a temperature adjustment. If the ambient temperature is outside of that range, you can use the plus and minus buttons on the controller to make an adjustment. For example, if the ambient weather is above 100 degrees, Tap the plus button on the controller a couple times to raise the level reading on your meter by 2 dB. Then, rebalance the amp at the input to get back to system design levels. Now that the amp is balanced and the extreme temperature adjustment was made, press the mode button on the controller to cycle the DSM over to AGC mode. The controller is used to upload the pilot channel into the DSM and place it into AGC mode. The back of the controller shows what channel it is programmed for. The mode button cycles through the three available modes. Clicking it while in manual mode will switch the DSIM into AGC mode. Clicking again will switch the DSIM to thermal body mode. Clicking once more will cycle the DSIM back to manual mode. The plus and minus buttons are only needed when making extreme temperature adjustments. It is helpful to know that the thermal body mode is available but most systems opt not to set the DSIM into this mode since the AGC mode provides a more precise gain control. On the line extender, 24 volt DC power can be verified at the test connector as shown. AC power on the line extender can be tested at either power director location. 24 volt DC power and AC power on the mini bridger can be measured on the power pack in the housing. 